Guys, I got it. Let me show you guys. For those of you that have been following my Instagram, you probably have seen the news earlier that I've gotten my C permit, which means that I'm now officially a permanent resident in Switzerland. In today's video, I will talk about my personal experience of applying for the C permit, the benefits of doing so, and also the criteria, step-by-step -step instructions on how you can apply for the C permit, and also tips on how I managed to get it in a short span of five years instead of the supposed 10 years. If you're new to the channel, my name is Olivia, and I share everything related to Swiss travels and life in Switzerland. So if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to do so to hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notifications bell so you're always alert to new videos. And without further ado, let's get going. Just a quick disclaimer here that I'm not an immigration lawyer so I'm not I will not be able to give you professional legal advice on your immigration to Switzerland what I'm sharing here is just my own personal experience with applying for the C permit and I just hope that you will be able to take a pinch of salt from whatever that I share and hopefully this would serve as a reference point for you when you make your own application. So just a little bit of my background uh, for those of you that might be new to the channel. So I'm originally from Singapore, but I moved to Switzerland about five years ago um, when my husband got a full-time job here. And when I first arrived, I was without a job. But over five years, uh, we have been living in the same canton in Vaux. And I've, over the course of the year, I've also uh, worked for three different companies, all in Switzerland. So a little bit about what is the difference between the B permit and the C permit. So the B permit is what I used to have previously, and it's the equivalent of like um, an employment pass uh, in Singapore's context. So with the B permit, it is issued to those that are, issue, that are holding a contract of employment in Switzerland, uh, at least for 12 months or for an unlimited duration. It depends on your contract. And this Swiss, um, this B permit is valid for five years and it can be renewed for five years uh, if, you certify, if you satisfy the requirements. The difference between the B permit and the C permit is that the C permit is the equivalent of Swiss permanent residency and it allows a non-Swiss citizen to work and live in Switzerland without any restrictions. So your right to settle in Switzerland is not defined, it's not subject to any time restrictions, nor is it uh, dependent on your work. There are many benefits when it comes to having the C permit, and the first of which is the certainty. With a C permit, you're able to settle in Switzerland permanently, and it gives a much a greater sense of security. So in the past previously with the B permit, um, given that I was on the reunification permit, meaning that um, my permit was actually tied to my husband's work and his permit. So in, in, the, in the event that he were to lose his job or he were to leave Switzerland on his, by his own choice, it means that I will have to leave Switzerland as well because I do not have my own B permit. It's tied under family reunification. The second advantage that comes with the C permit is that you have flexibility when it comes to your canton of living. Previously with the B permit, so your permit is tied to where you work. And if you choose to leave the canton and to go somewhere else, to live in another another place, say you want from Zurich, you want to lose, you want to move to Luzern, it is possible, but your permit will be subject to the approval of the other canton. However, with the C permit, you have the flexibility to, to live wherever you want and you do not need to request for approval by the different cantonal authorities. A third benefit is employment. So with the B permit, typically your work permit is tied to your job for the first three years, which means that it will not be possible for you to change your job within the first three years. However, with the C permit, you no longer need a cantonal authorization to change your employment and you're also allowed to work as an independent. Also, if you're unemployed, it does not affect your permit status. You will still have the right to remain in Switzerland. And that for me is a big sense of assurance. So it's like, even if I lose my job, I don't have to be worried about being kicked out of Switzerland because my right to stay is, is permanent. The other benefit is related to property. Previously with the B permit, you can only acquire properties as your main residence. Although a lot of people, a lot of B permit holders, usually they rent. And if you want to buy any properties, you can, provided that you're staying in the property as your main residence. However, you have the opportunity to do so with the C permit. So these also opens up opportunities for using properties as investment. And with the B permit, I have to renew it every other year. Once I receive the letter that tells me that my time uh, it's time for me to renew my B permit, I have to submit my application again to the cantonal authorities. And so far, like every two years, I have to renew it. 
But now that I have the C permit, I no longer have to reapply for any further permits because this uh, is taken as a permanent residency. It also saves up the cost, you know, for, for reapplying every year because every year you have to pay about like, I think it was 85 euro, 85 francs each time I reapply for the B permit. With the B and the C permit, you are allowed to stay outside of Switzerland for six months, but after which you may lose the permit with the, that, with the B permit. However, with the C permit, if for whatever reason I choose to leave abroad out of Switzerland for a period of time, up to four years, say for instance, I would like to return back to Singapore, I am able to suspend my C permit and still have the right to come back to Switzerland. And this was something that was previously not possible with the B permit. Finally, I'm not sure whether this is considered a benefit, but it's related to taxes. Previously, as a B permit holder, your tax is directly deducted at source. Every month when you receive your salary, it, your, your salary will automatically deduct a certain portion for taxes. However, with the C permit, you are not taxed at source and it means that for every year, you are responsible for declaring your own taxes, for, submi for submitting your own taxes. So that also kind of frees up the amount of money you have each month because you're not subjected to the tax at source. So now that we've gone through the benefits, let's talk about the requirements, the steps uh, and the conditions for applying for the C permit. The first condition is the number of years you have lived in Switzerland. So for citizens from an EU or after country, you can apply for the Swiss C permit after living in Switzerland for five continuous years. Whereas for citizens from non-EU, uh, non after country, say for my case, countries in Asia, you must have lived in Switzerland for 10 continuous years before you can apply for the permit C. For US and Canadians, you are allowed to apply for the C permit after five continuous years. So if you're wondering, hey, you, you just mentioned that for non-EU citizens, you need 10 years. So how is it possible that you managed to obtain it in five? So that's where the trick comes. I managed to apply for the permit C under the fast track permit C application. So what that means is that there's, there are certain exceptions that can be made if you fulfill certain conditions. These are, I quote from the website, provided that you have shown respect for the Swiss legal system and constitutional values, proven proficiency in the language spoken in the canton, um, meaning A1 written and B1 spoken, and also, thirdly, willingness to participate in the economic and social life of the country, and fourth, showing signs that you are well integrated into Swiss society. Exceptions also apply if, for instance, your spouse or your partner is already a Swiss uh, permit C holder, you are, you are then able to apply for this fast track application as well and you will also be able to apply for it within five years instead of 10, assuming you are, that you're from a non-EU or non after country. Likewise, for children of Swiss permit B holders, they will be granted Swiss permit C the moment they're born. So what are the documents required to apply for the C permit? So this was the document that I submitted. I think maybe different cantons uh, may have different requirements, but these were the ones that I was requested to submit in Canton Vaux. So I submitted my last three months payslip, also the post suite, the attestation from the debt office to prove that you have no debts. Uh, third, I submitted my language proficiency certificate, my marriage certificate, and my previous permit B. The application was actually pretty easy. All I did was I just went down to the local office and I submitted all my documents. Uh, I paid a fee of 18 francs. Then I waited for exactly one month, which for me was like, wow, I was quite surprised by how fast it took because I always thought that like, you know, this sort of like permanent residence application, I think it would have taken at least a few months, even in Singapore. Like I've watched other videos before people were waiting for like at least like two to three months before they received an outcome. I was pretty surprised that within one month I got the new so I applied on 10 of January and I received the letter exactly one month later on the 10 of February. And all I had to do was then to head down to the biometrics office in Lausanne to get my fingerprint scan and to get my iris scan. And then within five days, I received the permit. So this, I have to admit, was pretty efficient of the Swiss government. Key reflections for me, I think overall, I'm just really thankful and relieved that right now, there is much more certainty when it comes to settling here in Switzerland. I think previously, I at the back of my head, there is always this uncertainty and worry that, okay, maybe one day I'll have to leave Switzerland. For example, if I were to lose my job or if I were to stay out of the country for a long time. But now with the PR status, there is much more assurance that even if I were to maybe go back to Singapore for a longer period of time, there is the certainty that I will still be able to come back.
Also, I do think that planning to get the Swiss PR really requires somewhat of like a long-term vision. You really have to plan towards it. It's not something that you can just um, apply for it overnight because there are just so many prerequisites. The hardest part for a lot of people would be the language part because you really need the determination that you know you don't just do the bare minimum of getting A1. You need to get the min you need to get a minimum B1 um, spoken and A1 written, but that itself requires determination and perseverance to see through all of your language courses. So for me, I think that difficult part was already overcome since I got the Delphi 2. So applying for um, the PR wasn't that difficult in that sense. A lot of people were asking like, how come you're able to keep your Singapore citizenship when you got the Swiss PR? So there is a difference. If you want to apply, if you want to apply for Swiss citizenship, you cannot keep your Singapore citizenship because you're not allowed to have dual citizenships. However, you are allowed to keep a PR status while still retaining your Singapore citizenship. So that's something I just wanted to clarify. And to questions on whether I intend to apply for the Swiss citizenship in future, uh, for now, my answer is no, because I feel that deep down, I will always see and, and feel more Singaporean than Swiss. And I very much prefer to keep my allegiance to Singapore. And secondly, I think in a more realistic sense, I, I don't think I, I will ever look Swiss enough. No matter how much I can speak the country's language, no matter how much I try to integrate, I think deep down people will always perceive you as the other. So in this sense, I don't see the reason why I would want to apply for Swiss citizenship. Also because I don't have any other family here that is Swiss. And finally, in terms of the benefits, actually the Swiss PR already has very close benefits to the Swiss citizenship. I think the only differences is that you are not allowed to stand for public office, you are not allowed to vote, and you need to serve in the military. And all this is not of my priority at the moment. So for now, no, I will not apply for the Swiss citizenship. Here are some personal tips when it comes to applying for the C permit. I think first, it's important that you get it done in one single shot. That is to say, try to get all of your documents ready in advance so you don't come unprepared. Because I think the worst is when you are missing out on certain documents, like you need some approval from your employers or you need um, some other documentations from your home country and then there will be a lot of back and forth if you don't have all these documents ready. So it's best that you check really in detail with your authorities first in your canton on what are the requirements so that you get it done well a single time and hopefully it gets approved with no hiccups. I also want to thank all of you subscribers that have been with me since the very beginning when I first started this channel sharing about Swiss travels. I think I never imagined myself to one day permanently uh, settle here but this is really such um, a major life milestone and I'm really happy to be sharing this with you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!